Country club. <laughs> country club. You could be, that could be like the name of your, um, like, book. It could be from country club to Hollywood. <laughs> the country, country club, honestly. Because I started writing jokes for for that, in, just in case, because there's like you three extra You should do comedy minutes. at the country club event. Put, like, if they have, I'm sure they have events. I wish. I like, wish. They usually have, like, are we, for, we're doing this now. Yeah. Let me say, let, oh, let me okay. say hi real fast. Let me hi. see if it's recording. Yeah, it is recording. Okay. Okay, let me settle in. I look kind of like um, Nutcracker and boobs. I look like the Nutcracker, but Nutcracker with boobs. Look. We're sh we just got back from our sh Sugar Plum Fairy rehearsal. Sugar Plum Fairies. Okay. Sugar Tip Fairies. I know. So the battery's probably going to run out too, but before I say all of that, hi guys. <laughs> Welcome to Naked Pop, where we give you your pop culture cocktail, uh, and we give you all the raw, dirty, naked secrets. So we just talk about everything, and we are really basing it around comedy lately. I say we as in me and all my word personalities and jackets. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I had gotten the jacket memo today. I have a lot of jackets. I'm a New Yorker. I have a collection. Oh, really? A lot of jackets. I have like a special rolling rack that just lives in my house and we have no place for it. It's just oh. jackets and they're there. <laughs> I think I need another rolling rack except for my closet is obviously a we room. Do an overhaul in there. I know, I do. <laughs> I'll <help> Definitely. You. <laughs> okay. So, today let's talk about you. Me. Yeah. So, here's Me. the thing. Why do you need therapy or why do you not need therapy? Ooh. That's the first question. That's everybody a good question, right, therapy. guys? I'm sorry. Even if you think you're fine, everybody needs therapy. Even because here's the thing. No matter how many good friends you have or how fucked up you are or not fucked up, there should be you 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 can't have a f a friend that's just going to be your like therapist person. You have to have someone that like it's their job to just hear your shit and you don't have to hear theirs. That's interesting because Brian has said in the past like I'm not your I'm not your therapist, I'm not your mother, I'm not your father and he'll tell me sometimes he's like I can't be your parent right now. Mm -hmm. it's and like I'm like roles, <laughs> roles that you have to play in relationships. And I throw a big fit. Which is perfect. And then like, I throw a tantrum, oh. and then I get. I'm like, but what if I have the jacket? Then I can wear it on my show. <laughs> what does the jacket have to do? <laughs> because I, then he bought it for me I don't need yesterday, therapy. and now here I am wearing it on my show. I threw a tantrum, and I got it. <laughs> do you think that Brian would want to pay full price at fee free people? No way. No way. And then he's like, can it be for part part of Christmas? And I'm like, but then... Uh, <laughs> but I, I said, I guess if this is what it's like being married to a Jew at Christmas. <laughs> you get like one present. That's exactly what it's like. It's like Hanukkah's like, you get like little, little presents. Or you get like one big present. And I know, it's, it's not fair. I don't know. I, I grew up in a household where we were Jewish, but like... We, like we didn't really know like we knew but we didn't know so if I can explain it yes, properly yes. my father was a Jew raised a Jew bar mitzvah became atheist at his bar mitzvah really he says, because he really looked around the room and realized that it was like you know and when you had a bar mitzvah in 1963 versus 2003 1963 is all about your parents Oh. It's not really about you. He had like 10 friends and then it was like 50 of his parents' friends. Yeah, I think like, it still is like that a lot. It, I mean, but it your friends are part of it too, but... Yeah, like, but like now it's like kids like get so much money, they like buy a car, or like pay for college. Right. So he didn't, he was like over that. And then my mom, she was technically Jewish. Her mom was Jewish, but her mom was born and raised in Shanghai in China. And okay. so like... She was just like raised speaking Mandarin. She had like a governess, like Ama. Person. Every time somebody says somebody speaks Mandarin, all I think is how they speak Mandarin oranges. Oranges. Yeah. It's no. weird. Or Cantonese. What is um, a Mandarin? Where is Mandarin? Mandarin is a Chinese language. There's two Chinese languages. Oh, it's not a place. Mandarin or Cantonese. Is so they named Chinese the language. orange after a language? Yeah. I guess That's so. That's weird, isn't it? I think so. I thought Mandarin would be a place. How are Mandarin oranges then? It's probably, a, it, there probably is a place. But I just know there's two Chinese dialects and she spoke Mandarin. This is the part that I would pick out of the story. Which would out be, of all the stuff that she's saying, I'm like, but, but what about the oranges? It would be, it was, it was very confusing because my grandmother was like, you know, she had a British accent. Her parents were English. She, oh, sexy British accent. So she Everybody that, that sounds smart. Like, I couldn't go to like, a Chinese restaurant with my grandmother when I was a kid without her just breaking out her Mandarin and all the people in the restaurant would be like, who is this? Let's, hear, let's hear you say 
the Mandarin. Oh, let's Ni hao ma. <laughs> Ni hao ma. She she. It's like, how are you? Oh, it makes I'm me want to bow. Like, it makes me want to I mean, do like. So, so she, she wasn't really like raised with like Jewish traditions or anything like that. And then she left when she was 20 years old because the Japanese occupation happened and they like took they took her whole house. They took all of her the servants out in the back and shot them all. Like she had to like they yeah. shot the servants. Yeah, it was, it was so fucked up it for the World, servants. All they're doing is like just going to work. Yeah. See, I don't know anything about World War II or anything because I didn't go to school. Remember, <laughs> I'll teach you all about World War II. This Jew will. <laughs> like, yeah. Um, and so then she goes. Then she went to England and she met hey pop and she met an American GI and then and then she married him and moved to. New Jersey and had my mom and then she divorced him a year later married someone else and he what? adopted my mom and he was Episcopalian and they moved to the city they moved to Manhattan and okay when you going to if you wanted to go to a good school in the 60s in Manhattan you went to a parochial school it didn't matter what your What's religion parochial was. Uh, like school with nuns oh like my Protestant. god could you imagine oh wait did you no I didn't okay I didn't um but my mom did so like she had no idea until she was like 25 and she went to visit family in England mm -hmm. she was Jewish she was like long blonde hair green eyes she had no clues so like we're I'm like culturally she beautiful she's beautiful she's very beautiful I mean because she tested beautiful for playboy she is. but she didn't get it I have pictures of it you have the pictures where she tested for Playboy? I, I only have, like, I don't have it on my phone. But she also did um, National Lampoon magazine um, ah. in 1971. I Maybe we should, like, put some screenshots of that up because it is amazing. And she played this, like, it was like I just wanted to spread. stop and point out that outside there are little kids that are excited and running around oh, grabbing they're picking the dandelions. little dandelions. That's and they are the so thing. excited about it. Look, they're all, ah, there's a weed in the yard. <laughs> Yeah, please come again. <laughs> See you next week. Uh, cute little Mexican children cleaning up my yard. I promise I didn't hire them. <laughs> oh my god, they were so full of joy. They really were. That oh, was a kids. strange interruption, but I just had to let, show you because that's like one of those moments where you're like, "There's a moment happening," and There's I had to stop happening. everything and interrupt. And you had to say, "Oh, have you heard about this? Have you seen this video online of this little boy who was bullied?" Yes, that poor, poor. All well, I think is that poor baby, but that but he's gonna be grow he's gonna grow into a strong man if he takes the love and that he's getting back. If out of he it. does, but this is what I heard about this today. So as my roommate told me, because she she's got her ear to the ground. Okay. And apparently, this kid's mom is a huge racist, and they made up like a go. They did a GoFundMe thing. It's like, why do you need to make a GoFundMe for a kid who gets bullied? Like. Does he have medical bills? Does he have, like, does he need to go to therapy? What is it? But if your mom is racist and teaching you those, 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 uh, you know, ideas or that those, giving you those feelings of hate, it's just going to spiral more. What well, no, no. everybody? So, no, someone knocked on the door. Did they? They might have gotten a package. Uh, they probably just threw it. Yeah, probably. <laughs> All right, guys. Saddle. Saddle. Quiet on the set. Quiet on the set. Look, we gotta also watch this battery right here, so we're keeping oh, an eye yeah, on we're, we're on done. that too. Okay, so she's a fucking racist. Yeah. So it's like she's teaching her kid to like hate people. So he's going to school, hating people, being mean to him, and saying things, and then they're coming back to him, and then he's crying. I don't know if that's what's happening, but it's whatever. Whoever is bullying him, it doesn't mean that it, that bullying anyone is ever good, but. If that's what his mom is teaching him, it's just gonna it's just gonna perpetuate a cycle of hate. You know what I right. mean? Right. So it's like if you start a GoFundMe account, can we maybe start one just to get him emancipated from his mom so that she yeah, doesn't keep teaching him, into him this a, shit? Get him into a real house. Yeah, with, and like, so some... so he can become a strong, confident young man because I feel like she's she's gonna give him the tools to hate people that are being mean to him and then she's gonna them take love. the money and you know because she's the mother yeah and exactly so so she's a, a user so why why did she film that moment is what I want to know instead of like when my daughter you know when she's broken down and cried in the past everything stops mm -hmm. I mean um you don't film her I did once <laughs> <laughs> I mean, honestly. Why was it? Because it was like because a I needed the shot. But no, it was, it was, it was, she was crying over her boyfriend, and I was shooting a like a little reality show. Isn't thing. she ten? No, she's old. I thought your daughter was like ten. Why did I think <laughs> that? I made that up. I made she's, it up. Um, she well, to me, she's ten forever. Like I just, you know, <laughs> she was crying about a boyfriend, and I was just like, I just was like, honey, why? 
and then she was like because I need him or something like that and then I was like I just had to get it on film and I have it now forever and it's so, to me it's so yeah. funny and cute and so because she was baby face yeah, to me she had like a little baby face and I was yeah. like but it was like for her in that moment those were her real feelings yeah so okay I my did it once that to me too <laughs> my dad says stuff like that to me too and he'll be but like if she was being bullied and there like... were other people hurting her feelings which has happened in the past with her she got in trouble really badly when she was in middle school and she even got kicked out of school and yeah she wow. got kicked out of school blamed for something that was a group a group of girls mentality that and and then Allie's the one that basically just got caught oh, she was and, a scapegoat yeah and 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 I'll just say what it is because it was with spray paint oh um not for spray painting but for huffing oh <laughs> So she, my daughter's the one that Aww. got that got caught with the bottle because she would carry it in her purse because she had, you know, she had a cool mom that wasn't like the other moms. <laughs> I did too. I had one of those too. Yeah. I don't have my cool mom. I'm not like other moms. No. <laughs> so is my mom. Right. So she, you know, and she got in trouble and she got kicked out of the school. Now I went to the school board, like threatening to sue them. And then I told them every little point that they did wrong along the way, like like line by line. And, this is what and this I got her to. back into the school. Now, I remember sitting in the principal's wow. office, too, and saying, you cannot kick her out of the school. It's not right. And I promise you she'll be back. And the principal looks me dead on. He goes, I'm sorry that there is no way that she can come back and return to school here. Like on such a power trip. So I went above him. Mm -hmm. all, and then I, I went all the way to the top. With a uh, conviction that I was never going to stop until she was back in that school, even if she was, like, 50 years old. She was going... I would not... And they knew it when I walked yeah. in. Yeah, they were, like... So, so I mean, so I walked in like that. like I was going, you know, yeah. just look, here it is. And there's... You know, and I also paid such attention to every detail. And you didn't give me the uh, that principle because when he said that, I stormed out. Mm -hmm. And so I didn't take the paperwork with me. Mm -hmm. And that was one. Oh, so he didn't give didn't me the paperwork. No, you didn't sign it. Little things like that. Yeah. I got her back into the school. So I went, I was like a determined nice. mom, fierce, ready to fight for her. Yeah. Always. And so I get that with that, with this kid's mom, but it's like, she also has, she probably didn't think about that and uh, that her views are not what the rest of the country's views are. No, her views are awful. And awful. And she didn't realize, she thought that she was doing something good and displaying this and showing the bullying. But really it's like, y your son is, is what you teach him. You know, and well, it's if a good way to put the light, the spotlight on her when she wasn't expecting that. Yeah, she definitely wasn't expecting that, and I, I hope that that kid can, can, can get out of this okay. You know what I mean? Yeah, because there's so there's so many people, like so many celebrities and people that have been, you know, tweeting about it and I writing because with that nose. Oh, poor kid. <laughs> And then we did it. And then we did it. We're the mean girls. No, we're not. No, we're not. I'm, you know what? That's like a comedy joke thing, and it wouldn't have mattered what the nose looked like. If I, that's a baba ging bing. Sorry. I had to, but I had to throw that. <laughs> Me and my little dub up. To, I learned that from my dad. My dad would always have, like, that little mean, like, Just nip at the end of that you would say, like, and, like, and you sure are stupid, aren't you? Or like, like the little, like my dumb. Dad, my dad too. He told me something funny like, the other day. Like, okay, dummy. <laughs> he said. <laughs> you're like, thanks, dad. <laughs> he said. Uh, he said that he went to a. We were talking about support groups and 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 just different things like that. Because I was ex explaining to him out in the comedy world, there are more than in any other industry. There are a lot of people that are sober in comedy. And he was like, well, why is that? I'm like, it's it's because like comedy is like something. It's a way that people can like you know get their hurt out and laugh at it and and all and you know all these different things. And he was like, well, I went to a support group once. And I was like, oh, did you? Na? And that's because my mom told me he went to that or she went to that. <laughs> and he was like, no. And there was like this oh. long pause because my mom once told me she was like, I used to be able to get your dad to do anything if I gave him a bump. <laughs> That's just a side note. But no, he goes, he goes, he goes, no, I went to a divorce uh, support group when I was oh. divorcing your mom. And I got kicked out. And I said, what did what? you do? And he's like, well, there was a guy talking about how his wife abused him. Like, physically, she would, like, punch him and kick him and, like, do horrible things to him. <laughs> what did he say? And, and hit him with, like, pots and pans and stuff. And said, and my dad said, well, was it Pyrex or Teflon? Because <laughs> it makes a difference. <laughs> 
I mean, dad. It's, <laughs> it's true, it's funny, but it's me. Is it Py I, Pyrex or Kef Teflon? Teflon? I mean, I think that's what he said. You know what? You've got to do that joke on stage. Is it Pyrex or Teflon? Because you it makes have a to. Difference. You have so much material on your dad. Oh, I do. Her I dad, really do. I met him, and he is fantastic. He's ridiculous. Oh, he's amazing. <laughs> he's fun. I, yeah, he's going to get me a comedy career. <laughs> He is, and he's going to come along with. Yeah, he's ready. He wants to be at every show. He's just like, he wants to do the bit. He's like, suave. He wants, yeah. Our dad, tell, tell them about your dad and what he does with the stealthy Oh, my dad vaping. likes to vape, so it's he thinks he can do it anywhere he wants. Um, and he, you can't. It's illegal. But he just thinks that he can. And um, we had a, a showcase last week and uh we all i think our class did amazing i mean amazing. we did really it was well. so much fun really well and that i was on the yeah. last video you guys watched that too it was so much fun yeah i mean amber did amazing and all of my material most of it was about my father and about him <laughs> vaping and how you know ridiculous it is and at the end uh lisa brought us all up and we did our little champagne toast and they do a raffle and my dad won the raffle and he, he became a hero he walked on stage took a sweet ass time and he vaped as he walked on stage and he's all, and she's like, the host, should I, should I, and she she's like, freaking no, out. no, she was no. like, I'm like, no, all, should I, should I, should I? And I'm like, I like this guy. He's just so cute <sighs> with the vape. I'm just like, come on. <laughs> but tell them what it's like with shopping with your dad. Oh, uh, my dad loves shopping. He loves clothes. He's, um, very fashionable. I mean, rag and bone and he loves Rag and Bone. He loves All Saints. All Saints. Um, those are like some of his faves. Those are expensive brands. Yes, yes. He will spend. He will spend money on good clothes. He once didn't. Uh, he, he was once having a, a a sweater that had a label on it that was like rubbing his neck raw. And I was like, let me just take it out. And he goes, no, it's Gucci. And it's like. Oh my god. Label whore. So the label has to stay in there. Label whore. You can't take the label out. I mean, I don't know. Unless you could have told him, but dad, I could sew it onto something else. Why don't you just sew it onto something else random? I did that when I was in foster care. I had um, one pair of guest jeans, and they were like, everybody was wearing guest jeans mm -hmm. every day. And so I only had one pair, and then they, they got, I grew out of them. And so I cut out the guest thing because my new foster mom wouldn't buy me new guest jeans because at that time they were, like, expensive, you know. And, yeah. Um, so I just cut it out and I sewed it on the pair of another pair of jeans. Oh. And wore fake guest jeans. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. To school. The shit that we do. Fake guest that jeans. That think matters. And, yeah, and I, but I still have memories of, like, feeling so, like, oh, my, I like, felt like I outsmarted everybody. <laughs> like I, I looked so fashionable for so you know, and I could, like, oh but it was God. also it was also like that determination is mm -hmm. how I am. I'm like, don't tell me I can't fucking have it because I will find a way where I will still have it even if it's not the exactly the way it should be. I mean, exactly. to me, they became guest jeans. Yeah, it's a, that determination. I had something like that too when I was younger, and I. I'm an only child, but like I'd never had my parents I buy me. I wanted to be an only child. <laughs> it's 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 cool sometimes, but I didn't have uh, not the only. I don't really have the only child syndrome. I'm really really good at sharing. I share too much. I'm ah, like I give everything to everyone. Cool. Can I borrow your black baggy cool pants Absolutely. that you wore last time? Sure. <laughs> you can have anything. Nothing fits me right now, so take it all. Um, <laughs> but I I didn't have uh, like I went to a, a, a nice public school in New Jersey and. You know, there were kids there whose parents were buying them, like, coach handbags and, like, really? Louis Vuittons and all this stuff. And my parents, like, weren't really doing that, even though my dad had a girlfriend who worked at Chanel at Bergdorf and stuff when I was a senior. So that's, like, when I started getting good shit. But, like, I also had to earn it. And I remember being younger and, like, really wanting, like, a Kate Spade bag or, like, you know, the yeah. stuff that didn't really matter, but, like, that all my friends were getting for Christmas and Hanukkah. And I was at a mall with my mom and because we were, like, like discount shoppers like love TJ Maxx yeah. love Ross love all that shit and there was this girl I think I think it was maybe like shopping for like prom maybe cause I got invited like when I was in the 10th grade to the prom yeah got um, it for a different <laughs> school so she was like trying to get me a dress and we were going and there was this girl in the store and she was walking around and she was holding a bag that wasn't any kind of fancy bag it wasn't Kate Spade Kate Spade bag or anything but it had a little like name tag like hello my name is label on it that she uh -huh. put on it that said this bag is fake 
and I just thought it was so hilarious. And the other side said, not Kate Spade. And it, like, set oh, me free. Oh, wow. It set me free. I was like, oh, my God. And then years later, I was an intern for uh, Tommy Hilfiger, and I worked in uh, the, corporate, wow. the corporate closet. It was pretty fun. Wow. I was 17. and The I, corporate closet? Yeah. That sounds amazing. It what was, is it? I mean, I don't even know what it is, but it is sounds good to me. What a lot of designers have, they have them at different, at, at pretty much all fashion houses, at magazines, at any, anywhere where they send them clothes and things like that, and they have to have things like archives. So oh. it was like practically the size of a football field. It looked like like a giant dry cleaners with like rolling racks everywhere. Oh and my god, that would be my heaven. I love it. It was so much. Really fun. It we was have the same style. We really in my do. imagination, I dress as good as you. I think you do. <laughs> I love that jacket. I feel like I do in my imagination. But this place, like it was it was so cool because I got this job from a from from a, a field trip. We, I went to FIT, which is the Fashion Institute you did? of Technology. Yeah, it was the Fashion Institute of Technology. I went for uh, high school. Is it called FITM? Yeah, uh, no, that's that's here. FITM oh. is uh, is the fashion school here, but okay. FIT is in New York. Oh, ew. and I went for like summer classes when I was in high school. You're and very cool. Thanks. She's very like hipster and cool. <laughs> She's like <laughs> my dad is a hipster. No, you're a hipster. I went to. <laughs> Well, I tried. I tried. I, you know, I needed to do stuff in high school that, that made me feel like I was, you know, doing something. So I, mm -hmm. I, we, we had a field trip to Tommy Hilfiger to their offices, and I made like while we were there, I made friends with Tommy's nephew, and oh. he was like a singer. He's he's a super nice guy, and he we stayed in touch. And the next summer, he offered me like a paid internship because it was him and this other guy who had to move all of the stuff from the corporate closet from Fifth Avenue to their new location on 11th Avenue. So we had to just, we spent the whole summer just archiving and doing all the stuff, mm -hmm. but it was great because I worked with two straight guys. So uh -huh. anything cool that got found was mine. Nice. And, and our job was to pull items for designers, and Carl Lagerfeld was actually on the top floor, so he would come down too and be like, "Okay, I need every Your closet polo looks shirt." Amazing. Not anymore. It used what to be. What happened to it? Like moving across country and ballooning in weight, and then going down. And so you get rid of stuff. I I do because I get to the point where it's like, okay, I haven't been able to wear this for two years, and then something happens, and then. I'm like, Shit. I still have hope. I have that last bit of hope that I'm going to lose the weight. And I'm just calling it right now winter weight, mm -hmm. which is my extra, you know, few pounds. Oh, I got a text. Oh, I know who it is. Ah, hi. Anyway, <laughs> um, see how easily. So there's the sparkly thing. Oh, look that way. Oh, what's that? Huh? What's going on? What? <laughs> well, what, what happened at this, at this place was that I had bought, this is why it connects to the other story, is that, um, and it kind of all came full circle, because we were in Chinatown, and I, it was when the, um, the Mickey Moto Louis Vuitton bags came out, the white ones, mm -hmm. with the, with the color LVs mm -hmm. on them, and I wanted one so bad. That's it. And everybody at that time, it was an obsessive, like, everybody wanted one. It was. To the point, yeah. of, this was even before Instagram was doing, like, yeah. sharing things. This was like, everybody had to have, they had like, to have to. thing. Yeah, that you can't get, but exactly uh, only one or two people kn you knew had it. It was like exactly, yeah. and I so I, I went to Chinatown. I went you know through a fake wall. They bring you like through like a crazy like you know alleyway, and you go and you buy this bag, and I got it, and I brought it to work, and I just got reamed out. Not even like on the level of like where the designers were. Just the straight guys that I worked with were like, look at your fake bag. <laughs> And so oh, they we like, graffitied it. They graffitied the hell out of it. It was hysterical. The bottom of it, like, they put, they, they just drew all kinds of crazy funny stuff all over it. They, they drew a picture of a cat taking a shit. On the bottom of it was a, was a penis with a gnome riding it. I love it! Like, it was a sleigh. It was so absurd and ridiculous. It had all kinds of dirty shit all over it. And I wore it to Fashion Week. I love and that. So many people took photos of it, and the next season, the the brown bags with the pink graffiti came out. Oh. I'm just gonna say. I'm just gonna just say. Just saying. Oh my god, you. It was crazy, and I was like, we went to dinner the next night with Tommy, or that that night actually, because I was only 17. So Tommy was like, if you're bringing her to Fashion Week, like she's staying with us, like we don't want anything to happen to her. So we went to dinner, and I'm like sitting next to Tommy at dinner, and he's like, oh my god, your bag is so fabulous. Oh, your shirt is so fabulous, and I'm like. Like, <laughs> but we weren't supposed to be taking stuff, so he didn't know. But yeah, like That's I got awesome. all this praise for this bag that like was fake, and that I just embraced the fakeness of it, and I got wow. praise for it. 
That's an awesome story. It's like, you know, make shit your own. I, I mean, I have embraced the fake that I have in my life <laughs> um, all along. <laughs> And I really do. I know, I'm and I decorate of, it sometimes. Of that, like <laughs> when, like when do I start? I'm gonna be thirty. In you haven't started yet. A month. You I'm haven't done anything to your face or anything. I haven't gotten anything. Only thing that I do is chemical peels. I would like to get a chemical peel very, very badly. I do my own. I can do one. You for buy you them? Own. Yeah, I have. I like do like a little bit of um, lactic acid and a little bit of glycolic. It depends on like how strong your skin is and how many days you have afterwards to look like a weirdo. But <laughs> I have my whole life really to look like does, a weirdo. <laughs> it really does work, and I I, I do that because I have freckles naturally, and if you just you know keep getting sun damage and freckles on freckles on freckles, it can look a little weird on camera. Yeah. But, um, I'm also from New York and so pretty much the first 26 years of my life I did not live in the sunshine. So <laughs> that helps. I, that I helps. look younger than, you know, and then spending, spending and plus money you on didn't good spend creams. your evenings like out, you know, on the street corner smoking crack and doing heroin and that's being a junkie. That's probably and, one of the things. Yeah. That's it makes your, your face a lot better. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> crack, Same with yeah. like if you're not a porn star, your vagina probably feels better. Probably. So, I, I'm so glad that I wasn't a porn star. Yeah. But then there was a time I was like, God, Did I should have think been. about it? Well, no, because I never had the confidence. I was the girl that, like, would always, I, I, I'm topless everywhere. I don't care. I'll be but, like, I too. never take my bottoms off. Yeah, I, I won't go, like, full, although, aside from the other day, we were just naked in her house, just spray She's spray tanned me. <laughs> yeah, she, was, she came that over. That was fine. With she spray tanned me, and, and we had another friend that was here, and we spray tanned her, which was even funnier. <laughs> because I, I just can't even... <laughs> I love her. She goes, I low, I low key get spray tans. Low key. I, I low key. I get... She's really she, Everything really she does, cute. low key. I do that low key. <laughs> I don't know. On the, well, this, this uh, podcast is on the low key, so you guys share it with everybody that you know. <laughs> Please like down below and subscribe to this channel and I hope that you'll come back and do another one I would really like soon because I love listening to these stories and we could just go on and on and on and on and on and on and on. On. Oh, forever. Forever. So thanks guys. Bye. Oh, oh. Oh, oh. You gotta listen up. Listen up, there's not a thing that I can get from you Boy, I don't need that much, need that much How can I tell you?